rebuke it right now. In Jesus' name, Father. We take the sword of the Spirit, Lord, and we cut the head off of the enemy. He has no power, he has no authority, and he has no right here to interfere with what you're doing. So I thank you, Father, for full, total victory, Father. Through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. The enemy... Thank you, Father. But Lord, we need to decree it. We need to believe it and say it. So I thank you, Lord. We strip the enemy of, of any any authority that he's even tried to steal, Lord, or manipulate or deceive people into to giving to him. We just take authority over that. We rebuke that authority because it's not real and it's not right and it's not legal. I thank you, Father, that we have legal right to rule and to reign and to walk in this earth as you did. To do works and greater works. Father, we have the ability through Jesus to bring heaven and earth together as one. No more separation. Thank you, Father. It's like eagles, Lord. We soar into the heavenlies. We soar. We rise above. We squash every assignment. We break the neck right now. No more. Command it to stop in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the people, Lord, that have been affected, that are allowing the enemy to influence them, to keep them away even from these meetings, Lord. People that said you spoke to them to be here and they're not. I thank you, Father, that you're going to wake them up. You're going to make them aware of what's going on and what's coming against them so they can rise up in their authority and defeat him to overcome it. Thank you, Father, for opening their eyes so they can come because you have a lot that you want to give them. You want to bless them. Thank you, Lord. We just decree that they are set free. And any blindness is falling off of their eyes. Any deafness is coming out of their ears. They're going to see and hear you, Lord. Be led by your spirit, not some other spirit. Thank you, Father. All veils, all scales fall off. Any assignment against them. We just agree with heaven, Lord. We break it off of their life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you, Lord, for the perfect flow of your Spirit in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the open heaven. Thank you, Lord, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Hmm. Thank you, Father, that you are unlocking your destiny. For us, you are allowing us to see more, to know more, to receive more. Thank you, Lord. That you're making us aware, you're waking us up to what we already have, what's already within us, what's already been written in the heavenlies, <laughs> in the scroll room of heaven. And Lord, it's written in our heart. I thank you, Lord, you're opening it up more so we can see more. So we have more understanding of how to work it out here. How to walk in those steps that you've ordered for us. Every day. Hmm. 
you, Jesus. So Michael last night saw the ancient ones, the hooded ones. The hood, I just, they're that because they wear these like monk robes, these big hoods, so you can't see their faces. And, um, I mean, I, I know who I think they are, but anyway, they're of God. <laughs> and they're here to help us, to partner with us. They're part of the cloud of witnesses. And it's interesting that you saw them over there because that's where they always come. When they show up, they always show up on the east wall. And they always stand in the line. <laughs> so I believe that. <clears throat> I believe you saw right. I believe that's real. And, you know, just as I was speaking, I was watching them. They're, they're still there. They're there again, however, whatever you want to think. It's interesting because it looked like they had, like, um, scrolls or notepads in their hands and they were writing <laughs> they were writing on these on these pads on these scrolls and I was asking the father what are they writing you know I thought they should get what he's written I don't understand they're writing more they're writing something new hmm. I don't have a full understanding of that. I just saw them doing that. And I do know they take notes, that they watch what's going on. Thank you, Father. But I believe there's more to it than that. I believe they're writing what the Father is saying now. Assignments, mandates for the sons. And I believe they're here to deliver them to us. This was weird because I was it was like I was picking up on what they were thinking. And then saying, you know, these almost like instructions are for those that are wearing the ring the signet ring the family ring <laughs> the sons you have a ring on your finger did you know that if you're a son daughter of God remember the parable of the prodigal son the father put a ring on his finger you're wearing the family crest the heavenly crest <laughs> family ring they recognize that ring on your finger so just by faith close your eyes if you haven't yet and just receive what is being written this morning even on these scrolls the writing is being written for you and for me so father I just say yes Whatever you're saying, Lord, whatever you're writing and writing through these ancient ones, these sons of God, Father, I am open. I say yes to everything that you've written. I'll do it. I'll be obedient to everything you write, everything you say. I thank you, Father, for greater understanding, for greater revelation for a greater awareness, for a greater awakening in every one of us to your call and your destiny, your purpose on our lives. You're, un you're unveiling more. You're revealing more on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. I thank you for divine energy. Wow. 
That's what was. <laughs> it's really queer, weird, but that's what I saw written on this this piece of paper that this ancient one brought to me. It said divine energy. And I need that. So I can run and not be weary. <laughs> Walking not faint. Hallelujah. So I receive that. So if your spiritual eyes are open, you can see what's written. You can at least see in part. <laughs> Ask the Lord. Just receive what is written. Receive these scrolls. I don't care how you see it. Two tablets of stone. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just receive it. Receive the word of your Father today to you. Because on it is it's his, the desire of His heart concerning you. He will perfect that which concerns you. And these are perfecting meetings. I want to live in the realm of perfection. How about you? Be a perfect for I am perfect. Be a holy for I am holy. That's not in our ability. That's in that supernatural, divine grace that He gives us. Hmm. Father, I receive divine energy to run, to run my race, to finish my race, and to help others run their race, Lord, and to finish strong. So right now I'm like seeing strands of DNA. <clears throat> we all have the Father's DNA inside of us. Three strands. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Lion, ox, and eagle. Three strands. Divine DNA. If you're born again. And I see like like it's these three strands that are as one and they're turning they're moving they're living but I'm seeing glimpses of gold and glitter on them the shining as the light hits them <sighs> I see different colors. Wow. Uh, huh. Oh, I'm getting drunk now. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Oh, Lord. There's no high like the most high. Go higher. Just ascend up through your supernatural DNA. Go where you've never gone before. Hmm. Step into the room of transformation right now. There's all these different rooms in the heavenlies. All these different doors. I got a, I got a word from Paula Mangucci this morning. She, she began praying for us and she said, uh-oh, God's, I'm getting involved here. God's connecting me. She began to share. She was just seeing multiple doors in this, in here, in our church here, opening up this morning. <laughs> she, you know, she saw so many doors around this place opening. Come on, step in. I'm going to invite you to come with me into the room of transformation. Wow. Oh, and be changed. Just step through the door. Into the room. Transformation. The Father's DNA swirling around you. Swirling in you. Seven spirits of God beginning to envelop you and move around you and through you. 
They look like colored veils, like these scarves are translucent, and they just flow in and out and through and around, <laughs> transforming you. <sighs> the 22 living letters of light, the words of our Father. The words of heaven. They're supernatural beings. They are the 22 autosomes of the Father's DNA. They're, they make up all that He is. And we want to be like Him, right? So I embrace those 22 living letters. Stand in this room and just receive. The Ruach, the wind, the breath of God, the Spirit of God is breathing, is blowing on you, breathing life. Everlasting life, eternal life. Shackles falling up to the ground. I see cobs webs being just blown out of your minds. Clear headed. We have the mind of Christ. Mm. says that we're changed by beholding his glory we're changed from glory to glory beholding him do you know you can embrace him you can hold him he can hold you Thank you, Lord, that today I'm changed. I'm different than I was a minute ago. Mm. You have made divine deposits of gold in each one of us. (laughs) This is nature. Gold represents the nature of God. It's the nature of your Father, the DNA of your Father. Divine nature. into the throne room now see him high and lifted up above the steps that lead to his throne the father and the son sitting upon the thrones the angels worshiping day and night night and day can we do that song because that's the one that God has been speaking to me for three days Every time I wake up, he sings that song to me. Ah, wow. So we're not going to worship him from the earth this morning. 
you're there right now, whether you know it or not. You're before his throne because we went there. Let's come boldly before his throne of grace. See, he is grace. He is grace. So you give him Jesus. That's grace. Grace and truth. <laughs> Let's not come to get something. Let's come to give him something. Let's honor our God. Let's honor our King. But let's honor our father and our big brother. Because <laughs> we love them. We respect them. We highly esteem them. We place them above everything. Yeah, that's it. Let's worship him. Come on. In heaven, let's worship with the angels. The cloud of witnesses. The four living creatures. The seven spirits of God.
destiny clock every one of us has a destiny clock inside of us that God has placed there to keep you in his timing and I see the hand of the Lord resetting your destiny clock he's resetting your destiny clock and every one of us is coming into divine time we're coming into his time his timing we're coming up into his time into His the perfect timing of the Lord. I can hear Gary Beaton saying, you're right on time. You're right on time. You're right in time. I'm not talking about this earthly time and space. I'm talking about heaven's time. God's time, His timing, the agreement and alignment. It's like the intricate workings of an expensive clock. Everything in precision and perfection. Everything working together as one. Coming into His divine time. The winds of time. The angel that Gary said has been released now is moving through your life. Winds of time to bring change. A changing of the time 
a changing of the season, a shifting, a sense of shifting over us, a shifting in the heavenlies. Something's shifting right now. Put your hand on your belly. It's a resetting. It's a resetting. Heaven's time is greater than earth's time. We are to be the masters of time. It is our servant here. Teach us, Father, to master this time. you're here and you're prophetic you feel like the Lord is giving you something you have freedom to come and to prophesy to decree to speak (laughs) I just heard as he's saying the redeeming time every time Debbie plays by the way I hear it bubbling up in me it says it'll come like a pent-up flood driven along by the breath of the Almighty, like a pent-up flood. So I feel it here, and he's saying redeem time. I hear in Colossians it says, I pray that the door of utterance be opened to speak the mysteries of Christ, to redeem those that lack wisdom from time. So we have the power above time because he's above it. I know the truth stands above the reality of the circle of the earth below. We have, when, it, when people get lost and say, what, what are we even talking about? It's beyond our understanding. We are not to understand it. We are just to drink it in. He says, open wide your mouth and drink. And he'll fill it up. I, I, it's going everywhere. It's the cup that overflows right now. As you said, the angels. I saw what they were writing when you said you could see it. I saw them say, like horsemen, so shall they run. And they said, you will not grow faint. Jesus said, how would you, if you go grow faint with running with men, what about competing with the horses? So we do not compete with men, not in denomination, not in di- divisions, but we run. We outrun the chariot and the pair. We're on the 12th pair of oxen like Elijah in his time. And the other thing I saw him say is in Malachi. This is what the unity of the brethren, Psalm 133 does. The unity of the brethren, to take the hearts of the fathers and the sons together. And when they stand together, it would take, you know, one angel drove out 186,000 Assyrians in one night. They didn't have to lift a finger. Man didn't have to lift a finger. David played the harp and they came. This is the unity, the hearts of the fathers and the sons gathering. And it will be like the Elijah spirit, like the resurrection of the dead will be simplicity of the gospel. That's the simplicity, the rudimental, the elemental things, the the resurrection of the dead, the laying on of hands and expecting that Christ the healer comes. That's what I feel like. <laughs> amen, amen. Come on, drink in your redemption. Drink in the full, 
The cup of full redemption is yours. It's part of your inheritance. Drink it in. Receive full redemption. Full redemption. Spirit, soul, and body. Fully redeemed. His blood bought, paid for, in full, for our full redemption. About. So I, I go to the Hampton Inn. This all this all includes this here. Can you hold that down? This this is strange, so we, we need to join. Yeah, thank you. So so the Gideons they always nicely leave the Bibles in the in the nightstands. Well I, I asked the the maid if I could have one. So she goes in the back and gets me one and I open it and handwritten in it says, Look up Luke nineteen ten. I shared this with a couple people earlier. But it, it just comes into this redemption. Luke 19.10. This is for everyone. It's so free. You know, we were speaking about Smith Wigglesworth. He said something. He said, Jesus loves you so much. By the all power and wisdom, he did this on the cross. So, so that you would only believe. As many who believe are the sons of God. The we owe sons. We're coming into maturity. Nine, Luke 19.10. Yeah, I love when you say you can't make this stuff up. Because man can't do this. Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man has come. To seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He's gathering the scattered, the chosen remnant, the flock of God. Amen. Thank you, Doc. Pass the baton. It's a time. It's the time of the full, the full restoration of all things. It's time for the remnant to receive their full redemption. <clears throat> Hear what heaven is saying. Declare it in the earth. Make it so. Going along with what he was saying, what Joseph was saying about the about running the horses. While we were singing over here, uh, or I was singing over here, sorry. I saw these giant keys, like a foot long coming down from the sky and everybody was getting one and he said it's your time now he says we're he says you're a peculiar people and it's time for the warriors to arise so what i saw <laughs> this is so funny was this army of men on on horses they're all in their their battle array they got their big suits and stuff on like yeah let's go yeah they're on their big mounted horses and stuff like this and they're like yeah let's go but then here comes people busting through that line and he says, "We are the warriors. We are the these. We are the ones that are taking this. We're, we're taking this fight." He says, "It's our time now. We're taking this fight, and it's not time to stand here and, and look all nice and pretty on your horse, decorated up and all pretty and everything else." He says, "It's time to go. It's all out war. Let's go. Let's do this now." He says, "This day, right now, these keys that he has given us today, all this stuff that we have gotten today, right now, is for us to take this battle to the enemy now, and and beat him." Take it, take him out, take him out. It's all, it's all at war. It's been all at war the other way, and everybody says, "God, why me? Why me?" And he says, "Because it's for a time such as this. You've been through the training. A good soldier goes through through training, and it's hard. It's, it's you get bloody, you get beat up, you, you get sweaty, you you get dirty, but that's how you learn how to fight." He says, "It's for this time right now." This very moment in time, it's for us right now today. It's time for us to fight. It's time for us to go. And that's, let's go together. We're out running the horses. We're out running those horses. So thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we're taking the fight to the enemy now. It's over. Done. In Jesus' name. I just want to say something that the Lord has been speaking to me a lot about that I think, you know, he wants to really share with 
um, the body to receive is um, about expectation because I've, I've been through a lot with healing um, in my own body and uh, people ask me, you know, who are going through things, how did you, you know, get to this point of receiving healing? And, you know, so, you know, for me, I, I didn't, I hadn't, I didn't grow up in a charismatic church. Um, so it wasn't really like, I didn't think there wasn't a formula for me. I wasn't taught anything. And so what happened with me was I really had to, you know, be in relationship with the Lord and um, and he specifically talked to me um, at it was at a, a Randy Clark conference about expectation, um, and he said that um, I said what is he said you need to expect to receive your healing and I said well what is that what does that even mean you know what does that look like and he said it's like um, this is what he told me that day was he said you know if you have a meeting at work with your manager and you know that you've got your like your annual evaluation and you know that you're you're, maybe your manager's busy, but at some point there you're going to get a phone call during that day, and, and that manager's going to say, come into my office. So he said, that's what I want you to sit and expect, that you may not know the specific time, but you expect that at some point in this meeting you're going to get your healing, you're going to get that. You know, And there there is such a difference between just hoping that something's going to happen and having a, uh, I like what Matt Tomey says, he calls it a laser focus. And so we need to get a laser focus using our imagination and with expectation that we, you know, we can know the things because I knew the things. um, But what I did was I kept my heart filled with the truth. And so it wasn't like I didn't struggle with discouragement and I didn't struggle with, you know, pain and symptoms and things. But um, when I would start to feel that, I would say that's not the truth that I want in my heart and I have to recalibrate to expectation. And so I would listen to as many messages, as many testimonies on healing. And that's true for anything. You know, it's not just about healing. It's anything that we need in our life. You have to keep your heart pinpoint laser focused because we oftentimes have been through so many hurts and things that there's discouragement that can settle in and even our situation can cause you know we can look at that and cause discouragement and so in those times we have to have points in our imagination where we know that we can turn back and say i see my future as this and have that be the absolute truth and he told me that's what happened with uh, mary and martha that um whenever Martha was, she was concerned and she put her focus on the other things that were real responsibilities, you know, because we have jobs and we have things that are real responsibilities, but that Mary chose to sit and be laser focused on Jesus at his feet. And he said she chose the, to laser focus the right way. She put her expectation in the right place. And that's what we have to have if we're going to receive from the Lord because he's provided everything. He's, he's the, I mean, he's the conquering king. It's there for us. He loves us, you know. So that's it. Sister Debbie is going to speak <laughs> at some point here. Um, I just got one thing. I, I'm just going to step out and move on it. I hope it's... Um, hmm. It's not like the sword thing that I'm not supposed to. <laughs> but um, while we were in heaven, in the heavenly realms, we still are. Thank you, Lord. Just glitter. Um, not everything that shines and glitters is God. <laughs> But I saw, I saw a few people, maybe a couple people, that in the midst of this, you still you see yourself as a dirty vessel. So I saw like this this glass, clear glass, but it was like it had dirt on the inside. And that's the way that you see yourself as this dirty vessel, a dirty glass. And the Lord began to pour in the living waters. And he just it was just a, f- a pouring. And the cup filled and just began to overflow. But the Lord just kept pouring until the vessel was completely clean. 
all the dirt, the filth, the dust, the world was washed out. And he just continued to pour the living waters that transform us. Hmm. The living word that changes us. And so, I felt like the Lord wanted me to pray for whoever that is, just right now, in the moment. Because you're not, if you're His, and I know that you are, you're not a dirty vessel. It's just the way you perceive yourself. And He's going to pour into you the living waters, the pure waters of heaven that flow. He's going to change the way you see yourself. He's going to change the way you feel about yourself and your perception of how others see you. That's all going to change because it's hindering you and it's keeping you from receiving what God has for you. So if that's you and you knew it when I first said it, then I want you to come up. I'm just going to step out here. I know it takes great humility to do that. Which is great because God honors that. Oh my God. Take one more step forward, please. Some of you just desire so much to be pure and holy before Him. You are. I'm going to pray for you first, God. Everybody stretch your hands out. This is a team ministry deal. It's a corporate anointing that breaks every yoke. Come on. Release the anointing right now, folks. It's the the anointing that breaks every yoke, brother. He's going to break this yoke that's been on your neck. He's going to break this yoke that's been on your back. I command all condemnation to be removed now. Any demonic spirit that lies to him, that whispers to him, that makes him feel dirty... That makes him feel unworthy. You condemning spirit. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get off this man of God. Leave him now. Leave him now. And do not come back. I call those words to not that were spoken over you. I break that curse off of you. With the sword that Michael gave last night, I cut off the spirit of condemnation off of you. I cut off the generational curse off of you. I break that curse right now in the name of Jesus. Every generational bloodline curse, I break it now. The sword of the Spirit. I break it right now. Now, Father, He says you are a vessel of honor in my Father's house. And as I am, so are you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy because you are a son in the Father's house. You are a warrior. Wield the sword of the warrior. Speak the words of a life that destroys all death. He's put a sword in your mouth. Speak the word. (sighs) Yeah. Father,
Father, and I just pour in those living waters. It's the anointing that destroys every yoke. Thank you, Lord. Even yokes from his childhood are broken off now. Every yoke, Father, every weight that so easily has seemed to be able to beset him, to hold him back, to keep him down, to cause him to fall back. I thank you, Father. Those weights are being cut off right now. Those weights, those false images even in his mind, Lord, those, those, those memories, Lord, of things are being erased right now out of his life. The blood of Jesus removes all sin, iniquity, and trespass. The blood of Jesus. Mm. So, Father, fill this vessel up with the fresh water, with the clean, pure, living waters. Just open up, open your heart, open your mouth, and let him pour it in. To see yourself like a vessel, like a clear glass. He's filling you. He's filling you. He's filling you. Wow. Wow. Mm. He's filling you. His spirit is filling you. Washing and cleansing, removing all of the filth, all of the dirt. Mm. Father, I thank you this man has changed forever. And those things that have been a burden to him and a struggle for him will now become easy, Lord, because your burden is light and your yoke is easy. (sighs) Just release the burden of the Lord because it's light. I I release the yoke of the yoke of God, the yoke of the Father, the yoke of Jesus. You're being yoked to your rabbi, to your heavenly high priest. And that yoke is easy. It's a Because it's a double yoke. And he's in the yoke with you. (laughs) You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Wow. Rewrite, Lord, on his heart. Rewrite. Write your words on his heart, Father. I promise I won't probably spend as much time to just be ready and receive. Father, fill her up. I just thank you, Lord, for the waterfall. For the waters falling, the living waters now upon Brenda. Fill her up, Lord. 
floor. Fill her full. Wow. Mm. 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 Boring. Stand under that. Under the waterfall of heaven. Thank you for Debbie, Lord. Father, she desires to be one of the pure heart. The pure in heart shall see you, Father. I believe the pure in heart will see you in all your glory, in all your array, the beauty of your face. See the shining grace that comes from your face. You are one that will behold his face. Beholding his face. Pour out the living waters, Lord. Fill her full. seeing 58 over you something significant about the 58 to you it's, it's like you're it's like it's written it's set that time hmm. it's Matthew 5 8 the pure in heart shall see God hmm. you're one that will see him face to face Should I say faces to faces? Fill her up, Lord. Fill her up, Lord. Let it be a flowing, a flowing, a flowing. Hmm. Hmm. You are a living well. And the waters flow from the well. Just keep drawing on those wells of salvation. You're a well of living water. You're a living well. Everywhere you go, wherever you are, the waters flow. Let the living waters flow. Give drink to those that are around you. Just give them a drink every day. Pour it out upon them. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Father. You're so hungry. You're a hungry one. That's what I heard the Lord say. She's a hungry one. Mm. She's like the lioness. That's after the prey. Mm. She's the protector of the family. Mm. It's no fear. You're so hungry for God. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. <laughs> Fill her, Lord. Hmm. Hold your hands out in front of you like this. Open. Just release. I saw a loaf of bread. He 
He's given you the bread of His presence. The bread of His presence. I release the bread of His presence to you. Puts it into your hands for you to feed others. Then when you lift up the bread, it will multiply and you will feed many the bread of His presence. saw all these little children sitting in a circle around you. There were dozens of them. (laughs) And you were giving to them. You were feeding them the bread of His presence. (sighs) Fill her up, Lord. Give her everything that she needs to do to fulfill her destiny, Father. she came for. I thank you, Lord, you're going to meet her every expectation. We release the kingdom of heaven upon you and in you. Through you, we unlock the ancient doors deep within you. Deep, deep ancient doors that are wells of living water. Ancient wells. Deep wells in your family. Generations, many generations ago. Deep wells were dug in the spirit. You're going to reopen those wells. And that water's going to flow again. Huh. All that was and would have been will be again, saith the Lord. Everybody just say, ah, I needed this. <laughs> I'm whacked. I like it. Everybody stretch your hands out toward Dibby. You have you really don't understand how much how much you carry, 
how important you really are to the Father. How much we honor you and respect you and love you. It grieves me when I see you writing where people are, you know, coming against you and speaking against you and trying to put out your fire. Just keep going. You're on his trail. Don't listen to the scoffers and the naysayers. Don't listen to the lying tongues. I just like to... They just like to waggle their tongues. Mm. But you are highly respected and honored and received in this house. In our lives, we can't do it without you. You are such a key. (laughs) You are such a key to what God is doing in these last days. What you carry is necessary. I just heard the Lord say that. You're a divine key. What you carry is necessary to open these doors that have been sealed since Daniel. What you carry opens those ancient doors. Father, open her up now and let her say everything that's in her heart that you are saying. We receive the flow of the living word like water to our soul. We receive every drop, Lord. Because I know that this supernatural living water will bring forth a supernatural living harvest. (sighs) And we need it. We need it. We need it. There's a word of transformation in your mouth. It's in your heart to transform his bride, to prepare his bride. You're not called to just the body. You're called to the bride. You're not just called to the outer court or the holy place. Your happy place is the holy of holy place. And that's where, that's what you release. That's where it flows from. That's where they come from. The sound. The notes, the words, the music. Open her up, Lord. We say, open up the door wide. And let it pour. We receive her as a key that will unlock something in us that we have not even been aware of, Lord, that you've hidden there like buried treasure, just waiting for the day to be revealed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. It's okay if I have the lights up. Would that be all right? I know some of you don't know me. Randy knows me. We're from... (laughs) Randy and I have been in a lot of the same. Sorry, every time I get teary-eyed, my nose runs. I'm sorry. I want to introduce to you a friend of mine. This is Ellen, who came with me. She and her husband are powerful in our city. We come from Clarksville, Tennessee. They run the healing rooms in Clarksville. And they have paid the price. And they are highly valued and respected in our city. And Ellen is here for a breakthrough and for healing. She and her husband travel all over. Uh, 
making sure other people get healed. And so would you honor my friend today? Ellen, would you come forward? She had an aneurysm. She is very influential in our city in leadership. She worked for Shoney's and Culver's and management, management, management. And one day she woke up and couldn't hardly walk. And her husband rushed her to the hospital and she has a tear. And there's still a tear on the back of her heart where she's not allowed to lift anything for fear of the tear. They, they said they don't want to operate yet. She came here for a healing and a miracle. You need to bring people with you to meetings where God is. And I'm sorry, I'm a spiritual mama. I don't mean to step on toes. I know some of you don't know me. <laughs> we need to bring people with us to these things. We really do. I heard the Lord just say, healing has a voice. And healing says yes to healing, to health. So would you extend your hands? And I'm going to ask Marvin, please, and Michael, and Pastor, and Beautiful over there. Would you come? This is Sharon. I just forgot her name for a moment. And can we just stand together? Who's Mihai? Mihai. Show me who Mihai is. Yes, sir. Please come. Does anyone want to start? I'd like to share a testimony first before we pray. My sister had a serious issue in her brain with a tumor. And, you know, the doctors tracked it over the couple of years and you know uh, we prayed for my sister and uh, one day she went to go for her tests and the doctors could find no trace that there ever was a tumor they said this is impossible at least if it was gone there and gone it would show that but there is no evidence that there ever was one so uh, God does these miracles and I'm bl- and and I believe when you mentioned that, the Lord reminded me of that, that he was going to do a miracle. Yes. Amen. Amen. So. We command everything to come back into alignment. Perfect. In Jesus' mighty holy name, in Jesus' mighty name, the love of Jesus flows over her. We are healed. Jesus Christ took our stripe. He took his stripes for our anointing and for our healing. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sharon, would you come? Stand in the place of your mother and your aunt. Can we have the same team back up? Randy? Sir?
the enemies just come against her. And I was, I'm going to just let nothing hang her. Kidneys don't work. She's um, a major diabetic. She's got a pacemaker. She just got that. She's confused. She's kind of got dementia overnight. I mean, overnight. She lost her mind. Dangerous for your mom or for yourself. And, and then for my her sister, <laughs> who had has had been on ventilator twice in the last three months, once for 12 days, and um, she's just recovering from that. She's got COPD. So if they're staying together and I'm taking care of both of them, they're taking care of each other too. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And you are sharing life. Yes. Father, we thank you for Sharon and her heart to serve and. Lord told us you want to be first. You want to serve each other, and that's what she's doing, Lord. Lord, I speak health and healing in her mom and her sisters. Holy Spirit, we release you inside of them. You're the one that brings healing, restoration, full restoration in her heart, in her mind, in her whole body. Body, be well mind function well the way God designed you to function. I speak strength and courage and endurance in Sharon's heart and her mind and her body and Pastor Donald. Thank you Holy Spirit for always being here with us. Thank you for guiding them and giving them the stamina to do what you call them to do. Be well. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I just hear this old song, Sharon. There's a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the cat. Free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. I hear the Lord saying, I am for you, I'm not against you. And everywhere that you have to run, I'm running right alongside. I haven't left you one second, says the Father. And you have sat in the quiet moments watching. Are you here, God? I am there. I am there. I am your comfort. I am your shield. I am your healer. I am your God. And the Lord says, though the storm rages, if you have me in your boat, you'll have everything you need. Nothing is out of my hands. Nothing is out of control. And I just declare alignment to the timing of eternity here. The alignment of the things that need to come into alignment in this whole situation. I hear the Spirit say for me to decree and declare alignment. No more running to and fro. No more making last minute choices. Do I, don't I? I say clarity in your hearing. When to do, what to do, where to do. No more scrambling no more wondering, no more being exhausted. And Father, we just call this peace. Peace over this in Jesus. Peace to you. Grace to you. Grace. Great grace. Great grace over you, Sharon. Great grace. And I just brush off false responsibility. False responsibility. False responsibility. 
would take the weight off in Jesus' name. No more carrying that. No more carrying that. There's freedom. There's freedom in taking all of this, and you know I know what I'm talking about, and giving it to the Lord and saying, I I either trust you or I don't. I trust you. We're coming into agreement for healing. Don't worry about whether that's an issue or not. (laughs) It's not even an issue. We're agreeing for, for the healing, complete healing. And we'll stand on that with you. We agree. We stand. We stand. We're here. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. I know I've been called on to pray for you many times in the last couple of months. And there's times that I'll write pastor and say, how's Sharon doing? How's the mother doing? How's the aunt? He's calling on intercessors. You're not alone in this. You're not alone in this. You're not alone. So, Father, I ask you to raise up even more. And, Father, that we'll be... We'll be alert to when you call and that we'll answer that call and pray immediately when he says to pray. And so, Father, I pray honor over Sharon right now. And I also pray favor that when you have to do things for them, that it'll just happen, just happen, just happen. And there won't be all this laboring with paperwork and doctors and all these things that have become a bondage. Father, just favor, favor, favor. Michael, do you have anything? I, I had a word for your friend. Thank you. <laughs> I figured you. Do you want to go ahead? Are you are you audible? She's not audible yet, but she may be. Yeah, I just uh, the Lord showed me in a vision uh, that as my dad was praying for her, uh, because he, as he was saying, Re- receive, receive, receive that there were um, layers being pulled off of her head, like uh, almost like uh, uh, an ear of corn being shucked. These layers were being pulled away and that she was being healed. And she feels feels that we talked about that today. That's why she came. She came because what you carry is very rare around where we live. (laughs) And... And so when she saw, she said, that's what I'm looking for. And so she came here to have that shucked off her. (laughs) Yes. Praise God. How are you doing? Anybody else need a miracle? Come on up, sweetie. Amen. Here you go, bud. What's your name? Sean. Father, we just thank you for Sean, Lord. We just decree healing upon him right now, Lord. Just, whoa. Yeah. whoa. Just release the, the fireball just from your head, Lord, all the way through your toes, Lord. And I just see whoa. the Father like, shh. I see him giving you like a... Uh, uh, intervenous vein in him just transferring all of his blood going through you and so we just decree all that blood just be transformed into the subcellular of every part of your body and as you are in his image we declare you healed and just the fireball of God Lord we command all this to rise to be gone in the name of Jesus Total healing, total restoration right now in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More. Let me see one of these. Where is this? So we speak and be gone right now. Now, right now. Fire of God, right now. Shiti de Bakundori, Shiti de Bakundu Yarkabe. More, Lord. 
total restoration. We're speaking total restoration, total healing. Mm, the DNA of God all through you. A dread blood transformation. Mm. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We stand in agreement at this. Thank you, Randy. Thank you all. That's what love is. Jesus always comes away for the one. Thank you, Pastor. You know, when I sat in my room this morning, Ellen and I, and we wept, we cried, we prayed, and I had scripture. And we can have all that and not be where God wants us to be because he wants to go for the one. And he has taught me that so many times. It's not about me. And I'm usually talking about my job here, me hurting. <laughs> it's about them. It's about them. And what happens sometimes is we get we get caught up. And I was explaining to Ellen that some of the things, a lot of the things that we are not well from, we don't realize, is because we have a psychological thought process of survival that we don't even realize we have because when something gets challenging, we go to revert to we revert to the place where we felt safe but the sad thing about that is we weren't happy with that place before <laughs> but we keep running back to that because it looks better than the challenge that's in front of us but the challenge that's in front of us is actually the root r o u t e the root to deliverance <laughs> And I remember years and years ago when I um, broke, uh, I'm in my 60s now, so this was in my 20s, and I emotionally broke, that I felt like I was leaning over a cliff and one more blow was going to take me over. But he never let that one blow happen. He never let that last blow happen. But while I felt so broken and out of control, I knew at that point in my 30s, this was not working. <laughs> what I believed, what I thought, what I did for comfort was not working. And I came to the day where I wanted to stop. And the Lord interrupted me, killing myself. He interrupted my suicide. And he came into my car. And weeping, he gave me his heart. And he said, Please don't do this. I never felt love like that. That the God of the universe would know who I am. But he knows each. And everyone, because you were intentionally, intentionally. 
And I'm going to go back to something right here that the Lord allowed me to see in the Spirit how we are formed. He took me to eternity when I was questioning whether I was making a wrong decision about something that was going to alter my life. And I've been single most of my life. I have three adult children and eight grandchildren, but I've been single most of my life because he asked me to be. Has not been always easy, but I had to learn to live in the spirit and not by emotion. And he's been faithful to keep giving prophetic words that there is someone coming, but I'm not to live for that. And that's for those of you who are single. He is my husband. He will not share me with someone if my heart is wrong. If I'm looking to have a marriage based on it fulfilling me, he fulfills me. A mate is not to fulfill us. Going back, I asked the Lord one night at work, Am I making a wrong decision in walking away from this relationship that a man really felt we were called to be? But I didn't sense it in my spirit. And the Lord took me to eternity. And I witnessed the Trinity forming me. As I looked into the spirit, I saw the Father. I'm going to get this way so you can. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in a semicircle looking at something that hadn't been formed yet, but I knew it was me. And what changed me was the intentionality that they gave each one separately to be who I am. And why would I not like that? And the Holy Spirit started. And he's looking at this. There's nothing there yet. But I knew it was me. And he said, and I saw his whole thinking process go into gear. And once he knew what he wanted in me, he went, this is what I want in Debbie. And with his whole complete being, and then Jesus went. And he said, because you did that and you wanted that, this is what I want in her. And from the bottom up, and then the Father. Because you put that in her and that's who you formed her, this is what I want for her. And he did the same thing. Ah. I'm intentionally not one thing out of alignment. I was made perfect. And then he moved over. And I thought, what are they doing? And the Holy Spirit started. Because I put that in Debbie, this is what I put in her mate. And he formed my mate in the spirit. And he spoke to me. He said, there are no nationalities, no ages, no nothing in the spirit. You will know each other when you see each other. For he is seeking the one that I've said. You will know her when you see her. Just like I told you, you will know him when you see him. Zezazot, as Adam said. This is it. But it doesn't stop at just a mate. It is to be with everything we make choices with. We seek the presence of God. And we say, what is your word on this, Father? On everything in life. And the more we press in to have his thoughts and his way, the more we become. Because we're, once he moved us into the realm of the spirit, from the realm of the spirit in through the womb of the woman and out. That's when life came. (laughs) I have a grandson who is a miracle. My daughter was told she would never have children, which broke her heart. She always wanted a little boy. So she became a therapist in social work 
and she works. Can I just, can I just be, can we be family? I'm so proud of her. She works outside of Nashville in a boy's home. And these boys are 8 to 18 and nobody wants. And they're gangsters. And they look to kill each other every moment they can. And she's their therapist. The very urging to have a child, a man child, a boy, she takes that love that is already in her and she pours it out and becomes a mother figure to these boys. Now, she's taller than me. I don't know where she got that. And she's tough. And she's a redhead, so she got fire. She's a natural redhead. This is not natural. And one day, two weeks ago, I keep my grandson after work until she can get off every day. And that's a God thing. Uh, She came in and the weight was on her. I said, what's going on? These are real things that happen in our walk, in our Christian walk. She's a wonderful, godly woman. And she said, Mom, I finally got this young man to finally settle down. Got him enrolled in college. Got him a part-time job. And as soon as he turned 18 today, I released him from the system. And on his way home in Nashville, he had a car wreck. And he died instantly. But you sowed a seed, Tanya. You loved a man who may have never known What a real woman that loves God can be a mother to. Don't give up the journey. In her quest of carrying this desire to have her own child, and the doctors were saying you cannot have children, the prophets said you will have a child. So every time she would get depressed and keep going on and helping other people's children, I kept saying the prophets have said, and she finally got bitter and said, don't tell me that anymore. Because they said no, and I'm just, I'm just going to help other people, other children. And then one day walking through my house, just minding my business, my right arm shot up. I'm just, what I'm trying to tell you is not just a story. I'm talking to you about spiritual things. My right arm shot up in the air, and I looked at my right arm. Because I had no control. <laughs> And the Holy Ghost spoke. And what I've been working on in my life, and this is where we need to work, is that my soul will immediately obey what the Holy Spirit says. That I will not for one instant stop and decipher it, discern it. Is that you? (laughs) Do I want to? No. Immediate. And I have been talking to my soul and saying, you will respond to the Holy Ghost. We need to talk to our soul and command it. There's power in talking to your soul when it wants to act up and say, you will not. The Lord said to me one time when I learned this in part of my emotional healing, he said, did I not say that you lay hands on the sick and they recover? Yes. See your hands? Yes. Lay them on the sick. (laughs) So that's what I do all the time. When I feel something is not right, I lay hands on the sick and I say, in the name of Jesus, soul. You will obey the voice of the Lord immediately, whether you like it or not. And you will learn to love correction. Love correction. Love instruction. Love righteousness. And the more I'm doing that, the easier it's getting to be. And the higher I'm ascending, and the more I'm hearing, and the more I'm transporting and saving people across the world, and the more I'm having visitations, which I had one right before I came here, which I'll share... This is not this is not different Christianity. This is Christianity. Walking, living, breathing where our spirits already have lived and all we did was take on a body, but my spirit still lives there. And because it has to learn to do that again because the world pulled us down and, and told us to become real and I am real. I'm not from here. I'm from there. And I'm going to live from there. And I tell my soul, you will stay in the spirit. There's power in speaking to your soul. So I'm walking through my house. My right arm goes up in the air. I split second think, why is my right arm up? 
And the Holy Spirit said, declare and decree. Oh, I just saw a deer ran across here. Wonderful. <laughs> He's cute. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, and my, my mouth immediately uttered. I didn't sit and dis, distract it. And I said, in the name of Jesus. And he showed me what to do. And I immediately responded, every spirit of doubt and unbelief for me having a grandchild through Tanya. Right now, break your power over here. Put my hand back down. Whew, that was powerful. My arm went up again. <laughs> what are we? Whew, okay. And he said this. In the name of Jesus, do you know you carry that power because you live in the realm seated. You make judgments, you make legislation, you command, you declare and decree. You have creative power because he lives in you, on you. You are his. In the name of Jesus, boy, child, come forth now in Jesus' name. I will. And then I waited. And here came the phone call. Mom. Mommy. Yeah, when your daughter's 35, mommy sounds sweet. Mommy. I'm pregnant. Immediately, I said, the child is called of God. And I need to explain to you what the Lord did for that. He is not yours. He is God's. And he has a call. He's already had two prophetic words spoken over him that he will be an apostle and a prophet and he will carry my mantle when I leave. Already two prophets have prophesied that. So you need to understand something. Your ways of sleeping around with men, your ways of living in the world, you now have a son. You don't want to harm him. You don't want him to live like that. You need to get right with God. Oh, my gosh. She was in church the next Sunday, and I had been standing for years for her to get right. And, man, has she grown in fire. And Cammie is now almost two. He's almost two. And everybody who meets him says, what is that about him? I see anointing. And I spend time with him every day. I take care of him after work. I go get him from daycare. And I spend four hours a day with him. So, God does miracles. So many miracles you've done. So many miracles you've done. So many miracles you've done for me. You know who wrote that? Ruth Heflin. She knew what miracles were. And everywhere I go, she watches. I see her always standing there. Because she, she imparted into my life right before she died. And she said, you'll carry what I carry. Now, can I tell you something? Everybody's called to carry an anointing. With that comes a cost. We don't like to talk about that. I don't like to talk about it a whole lot, except I have commanded my soul to start loving it instead of fighting it. And so I want to share with you something that happened to me recently. Because it was the Lord and it affected this conference. I have a cleaning business. I've had it about 35 years now. And the Lord gloriously gave that to me as a single mother on welfare years ago. And before I went through a divorce... The Lord um, started bringing prophets into my life that kept saying, you're going to have a business and your children will be blessed. And I thought, what do I need a business for? My husband was high-ranking officer in the Army. We had plenty of money. What did I need that? I was on the road. I came to Marion all the time through CI with Jan Painter and did meetings here. And I was telling Ellen, there, there's a reason he keeps bringing me back here. There's a call on this city. He keeps bringing me back to Marion. For 30 years now, I've been coming to Marion. But when I would do meetings, we went at the Civic Center or something. 
So the Lord, after my children were grown and off in college and getting married, the Lord told me to let my business go. Well, I was making about 100000 a year. That was a little hard. But he said, I have another another channel for you to go. I have another place for you to go. And you have to let go of that so I can give you the other. I'm talking about, I'm talking about understanding, yes, that if we want to grow in the spirit, we've got to kill the flesh. And when God introduces something like last night, like this, do you know that usually when I'm here, we do real loud, boisterous, yee We do a lot of worship, but this time he won't let me do it. So while you're wondering sometimes, because I look at your faces, what the heck is she doing? I'm on the other side of that smile saying inside myself, what is going on? <laughs> so saying that, the Lord had me go through three and a half years of no income unless he brought it. And from having everything I needed to having nothing, there were a few times it got really close to losing everything. But he would not let anybody hire me. Everywhere I went, nobody would hire me. Ugh. I mean, he said, well, I had to do this because otherwise you wouldn't let go. So I've had to make it that way. And I had to repent. I had to repent. I lived a very good life. I loved to give. I'd give out $100 and $1,000 all the time. Loved it. I'm coming back to that, Lord. I declare that. I decree that. I'm coming back to that lifestyle again. And so... He, after the three and a half years, he changed a lot of my theology. And then he said, I'm going to put you in food service. And long story short, I'm at Kroger, work full time. And everything and everybody who didn't like me made my life a living hell for the last 12 years. And it has been a breaking to the point again of emotionally breaking from the abuse and the stuff that I have been through from people who hurt. And it's been really hard because it was the things that he healed me from in the past, from my growing up years and my husband doing what he did to raising children alone from the time they were small to working all the time with my business. And then ministry has its own stuff. Oh, there's things I've gone through in ministry that make your hair turn gray. Yes. And it's not just me, it's, it's everybody. And we say we want to be in ministry, but there's a cost to being Jesus. There's a cost, because you've you got to deal with stuff. But apart from that, the Lord put me into that job, and he has me working with people who are just like the people who almost killed me in my childhood. And he said, I'm sending you back in now that you're well, and I want you to bring them out. Because he showed me how to come out of mine. He showed me how to come out of pain. He finished the healing. He finished the healing on my parents. And before they left this earth, we were friends. Real friends. And they both got saved on their deathbeds. And the Lord said to both of them, it was because of your walk that you did not bow your knee. And so I, they wanted me to give up God. They wanted me to take my music international they wanted me to do all i said i cannot do that i cannot do that it has to stay in the church and they threw me out as a teenager and i lived on the street and so here we go (laughs) and thursday before i came here my manager came to me and he said i want you to not, not would you like to he said i want you to go out back to where the carts are were discarded and everything is back there that shouldn't be back there and I want you to clean it up. My first thought was there are 20 year olds doing absolutely nothing on that front end. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to ask a 62 year old woman. <laughs> and I looked at him and the Lord said, the Lord jacked me up And he said, pass the test. I'm finally learning. I'm glad he redeems time. I'm finally learning that all these things I'm buttoned into, 
they're actually my breakthrough. They're my breakthrough. And what I've been doing is going, I don't like that. I don't like that. And then I go, ooh, that wasn't good. That was a challenge to come into the spirit. So about noontime, I thought, I usually do this and that at noon to 3.30. And I go, maybe he'll forget he asked me. I'm, being, I'm just being transparent, okay? And the Holy Spirit just went, ah. oh, I know what. He doesn't know I'm on vacation. Maybe he'll really forget by the time I come back week after next. Ah. <laughs> I mean, he was checking me. And I gently again passed the test. 95 degrees. I said, Lord, I need grace because there's equipment out there that I cannot lift. I mean, they discard everything out the back of the store. I went and got some heavy-duty gloves like you use dishes. I got my cart, which is, you know, that long and this deep. And I headed out to that graveyard. (laughs) I said, please give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. I said, I'm so sorry that I keep fighting you when you ask me to change. I'm so sorry that I stop with the challenges and here I want to be higher in the spirit and I want to be more like you. And yet every time a challenge comes up, I'm fighting it. I'm so sorry. And worst of all, I'm carrying Jesus and the people are seeing my struggle. Instead of being an example, I'm standing in the way. I want that heart all the time. That what I do affects others. People know I'm a minister. You know what that's like? Yeah. My picture hangs on the wall. I'm not patting my back. I'm just going to tell you reality. My picture hangs on the wall in our Kroger where everybody can see it. Because I won an award last year with Kroger, the most valuable, I was going to say team player, but that's not it, the most valuable volunteer for Kroger. And I got that for doing what I do here. I minister to people. I help people through crisis. I'm a chaplain in my hospital, and I lead worship and help people come into a better life. That's how they worded it. And I got an award for that. And then... They came two weeks ago and said, we want to do a commercial on you. Why? Because we keep hearing what you're doing. And we are starting to hear that you are now praying for customers as they walk the store. I said, is that okay? Yeah. The reason it's okay is because when they walk away, they're changed. And they're telling us, thank you for someone like her. It makes a difference. So I went out and I cleaned and I smelled like baby diaper, magnified. I smelled horrible. I was filled with trash, everything you could think of that was back there. But you know what was so awesome was when I got to the heavy equipment that had to be moved out of the way. And I had said to the manager, I may need to call a guy to come help me. Oh, that's fine. But when it came time to move that, the Lord said, I'll help you. And with one hand, picked up the equipment and moved it to the other side of the lot. He was with me in that. He was rejoicing over me saying yes. And when I got done, I took it into the store to the dumpster in there. And he didn't even say thank you. And I said, all of the glory, all of the glory is yours, is yours, is yours. I passed the test, didn't I? Did I pass the test? And please let him have seen that I was willing because it matters to me what testimony I am. Friday morning, I sleep in because it's the first day of my vacation. And as I awoke, immediately I had to look to see if I was still in my bed Immediately, I was translated in the spirit. 
And I was not only translated off my bed in the spirit. Not, I wasn't off my bed. I looked to see. But my whole body, soul, spirit shifted like 10 feet up. And I was completely wiped, washed clean and put into a whole new place. I knew in my heart that whatever I passed that test or not was going to be contingent for this meeting. And I did it for the love of this pastor, for the love of you, because I wanted to be where you are and I could help you flow. And that's what it has to be about, that our walks are not for where we can get, but that we can labor with one another and that we can come in with one another and we can help build. It can't just be about what I get out of it. I oh, Believe me, I'm enjoying it. My worship has totally changed. I'm still trying to find it. And, I mean, he wiped, he wiped it. You all, I saw you all last night like, what's she, I don't know. I had a smile on my face. I was telling Ellen, I was just dying in cycle. Can we just go to a song? No, you're not going back to that place. Oh, Jesus I don't know if they're smiling, so y'all don't know I was struggling so bad. Because what do we do when we come together? A fast song, a slow song, a worship song. You know. I even has, I've had a song list every day. It never goes, it never goes. <laughs> so you know what? I, it's not, I'm not just coming to lead worship with you. I'm growing and I'm changing in this whole meeting along with you. If you can give me grace, please give me grace. He's doing something. When he, when he lifted me up, he totally wiped me clean. I was totally white as snow, and he's doing something different. So can you please give me grace and let me figure out what it is I'm supposed to move into because I'm in a clean slate right now. Clean slate. I wanted to tell you that last night, and it was so hard not to say, please forgive me. I just, you know, he won't let me go. He won't let me go there. He won't let me go there because I could see some people didn't understand why we didn't do just a regular, you know, worship. Oh, he won't let me go there. But you know what I heard today? I don't have music theory training, so I don't have any idea what it is I do in the natural, but I hear it in the spirit. And as soon as I hear it in the spirit, I move to that sound. And I know, I was telling Michael, that God purposely made my brain that I can't understand music theory. And when I went to college, they didn't know what to do with me. Because I, they, I'd sit down to take piano lessons from a professor, and she'd go, what are you doing? Don't you see that written there? What, what is that? What do you mean, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I went to get a piano performance major degree. Pff, flunked. You know why? Because my grandmother was the first person to play in silent films. And she saw the call. And at five years old, my grandmother said to my mom, we will pay for any instrument that she wants to play. But she's carrying the glory. <laughs> And so my mom put me in piano lessons, and I played, took two years, and then my parents wouldn't pay for any more. So you know who my teacher was? The Holy Ghost. And I did my part. I would watch people. I'd watch people. I learned to read music. I just don't know what the heck a lot of it means. And so I'm watching people, and I would ask people who were, who were knowledgeable, what does that mean? What, what does... Oh, that makes sense. And what I would do is I would sit at my piano day after day, and I would just start playing songs. Back then it was country western was big in the 70s. And so I was playing country western and playing Christian, because by the time I was eight, I was already the church pianist. And I'm not flapping my back. I'm trying to tell you a story. So age eight, I'm sitting at the piano in church, in a Baptist church. And there's a reason I say that. They kept me in line. Can I, can I say this to you? You've got to find where you're called and stay there until he changes. And every pastor he's put me under, every single one has been an assignment. And they never, none of them bless me when I have to go. <laughs> but I've been there because there's something for them that I carry. And there's something for me that I need to have in my walk. If we don't stay put... We are going to be shortchanged in our anointings. 
And I'm telling you, being my age right now, I'm really looking back over my life and going, I should have been more serious about that issue right there. But God redeems time. But I do think we st- <laughs> Anyway, by the time I was high school, I was professional level musician. And I was playing for bands. And then my father got a... Uh, got approached from a uh, band and said, we want to hire her, want to take her places in Nashville. And so my dad required, I said no, because my sound is for the church. And so that ended badly for years. And then I moved next to Nashville, and my father said, are you going to do it now? No. You're wasting your life. And so between my parents and the church people and my husband who left me because I wouldn't give up God, I've had to stand and say, I will not. I will not be moved. Because you're looking at someone who was suicidal and broken. And he healed me. He healed me to the uttermost. And he helped me to know what love is. And he gave me a wonderful life. It's filled with challenges. But those challenges are nothing compared to him living and breathing in me. And those challenges are nothing compared to seeing lives changed because of my testimony. Because of the worship. Because the worship is not a song. I'm already there. And I'm hoping I can get you to come on the journey. Because living there with them and hearing their sounds and saying that there was a church I was to minister in and they're a whole different stream. And I said, I can't do this. I have no idea. They were an African-American church and they have their flavor. And I'm not that flavor. I try to be. I had to ask the drummer, stop playing. I'm white. Stop. I don't have your beat. (laughs) He kept messing me up. (laughs) And so they laughed about it, thank God. But I was real honest. Please don't play. You mess mess up my white beat. (laughs) I couldn't even play when he played. And so so I was getting ready to go do this meeting, and I was just, oh, because it's a a streamlined uh, place where their bishops were coming in from all over the country. You know, high-ranking bishops coming in. Why are you asking me? You've never heard me lead worship. Yeah, but one of our speakers did, and they said, you carry the glory. But you've never heard my worship. I'm not at all like you all. But see, it was a God thing, because it was a door that when I walked through, it opened the whole world up to me. Because see, she held a key. This high-ranking bishop held a key. And she goes around now and just unlocks and unlocks and unlocks doors in ministry for me. And I've been all over the United States the last two years because of her. But if I had not, I was fearful. I was so fearful. I couldn't even, I was fearful. I'm going to look like a mess in front because I don't do what they do. But God said, do it. And in his wonderful grace and mercy, he gave me a visitation and impartation. Do you know, if you'll just step towards the problem, step towards the challenge, that's all he wants, is are you willing to step in? I'll do the rest. But I need your cooperation in order to do this. So, the night before, I was supposed to preach somewhere. Had no idea what the word was going to be. I was not only getting the songs, I wasn't getting the word. And I had to leave for Kentucky in a few hours and go preach. I had no idea what I was going to do. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Oh, God. Oh, no. God, help me. So I'm sitting there, and I'm going to be honest. I sat down on the john. And he came. <laughs> It's hard to tell that story because it's so humbling. But I don't know why he waited until I sat down. But I sat down to get ready to go preach. I didn't know why. And all of a sudden, I was in the throne room. (laughs) I hadn't even thought of that. (laughs) Oh, he is funny. Sometimes he does things. So I'm in the throne room. Thousands of angels 
And the throne is not some seat seated there. That was bad English. It's not sitting there. <laughs> we, we have a wrong concept of that. The angels were twirling around the presence, and they were singing. It was a sound that my natural ears had never heard. My ears were struggling. I was struggling. I, oh, that's a sound. My ears wanted to catch it. I couldn't catch it. It was a sound I had not yet heard. And they were singing, twirling. To him who sits on the throne, be blessing and glory and honor. And they were singing. And I said, oh, my goodness, that's a throne room song. And we didn't even know. To him who sits on the throne. And they were singing it over and over over and over and I'm sitting there just oh trying to grasp it was ethereal to the point where I was oh my gosh and yet it's my home I just had not experienced that yet oh it made me hungry because I belong there he doesn't just give us a visitation to have a visitation he's giving you a hunger for where you're supposed to be and when he's saying that I'm sitting there And he said, that is your mandate song. That is the mandate song on your ministry. Well, you know what I preached that night? (laughs) I preached that. There's a mandate sound you carry. And you can't take that visitation away. It did life inside of me that changed me forever. That's That's what we need to seek. That's why, can I just be a worship leader for a second? That's why when I say, would you lift your hand? It's not because I think it would help you worship better. It's because I'm seeing in the spirit that if we will just do a prophetic gesture, and what that is is saying, here I come. And if we'll just do what the worship leader says, and that absolutely will change your worship in a split second, and you'll be right where he is. I, I never give an instruction without hearing from the Holy Ghost. I don't do it for any other motive. You may, I have, I've sat under worship leaders who don't like people sitting, you know, and say, you know, why are some of you sitting? (laughs) God's not like that. Do you know what I'm saying? He's just not like that. Well, anyway, I went to the meeting that night, preached that word, had lots of people at the altar, turned around, walked into that church, now I'm a little bit out of my, what's the word, element, comfort zone. They're all with their, they're all with their things on. I didn't know it was a big ordination service. That's why all the bishops were there from around the country. Oh, I'm sitting there, oh yeah, okay, I was nervous before. Now I'm really nervous. And they didn't give me any instruction on when or what or how long, and that makes it worse because you don't know what they expect from you. If you're pastors, would you let people know what they're supposed to do? please? So I'm just sitting, I'm watching, and I'm looking, and all of a sudden everybody leaves the room. I go, where did everybody go? And a woman comes in and she says, Bishop said to tell you to go ahead and start worship. I go, there's nobody here. <laughs> what do you mean start? And she said, um, she wants you to start because they're going to come in. And I didn't know it was an ordination service. And so as soon as I started worship with a different song, I didn't do that one. With a different song, they all started walking in. Oh, my gosh, here comes the bishops with all the collars. And here comes the high-ranking bishops from all over the United States. So I'm like, I was so nervous before. Here, I hope I heard you right. Do you know that walking in the Spirit a lot of times is just obedience? And he will not shame you if you make a mistake and find out that it wasn't the Holy Ghost. He will not shame you. He's so thrilled you even took the chance. Please do not fall back. Now, there is a thing of ministry ethics. (laughs) My pastor had to get up a couple weeks ago and explain to people what I did when I prophesied because our church doesn't usually prophesy. But he, he gave me permission to always prophesy if I get a word because I've been under him for 17 years so. He had to get up and explain to them what just happened because I gave a word in tongues first and then a word. And he said, I need to explain to some of you because you're not used to this. And so he explained it. But I did that only because he gave me authority. That's the point I'm making. Otherwise, I'd have gone to leadership and said, can I give this word? Otherwise, okay. 
So there are some ministry ethics. So they all walk in. I'm feeling totally, but I'm stepping in to what I experienced the night before on that toilet. You can't take that experience away. And so you know what? Um, all of a sudden their worship team got up and I went, what's going on? Made it a whole lot worse. I didn't know what was going on. And so they started singing. I'm whew, okay. I backed off the keyboard and somebody else come up with a guitar and, and I, they did their music their way and I'm standing there. Oh, shoot. As soon as they finished, Bishop stood up. Debbie, come take us to the glory. Boy, was that a song or was that a song? I hit the keyboard. I'm, I'm trying to challenge you that there's always stuff going on. No sound came out of the keyboard. Oh, great. I'm already nervous. I already hope this is the song. <laughs> no sound out of the keyboard. Quickly, the sound man came up, found the glitch. And by then, I was totally broken because I was so totally out of my element. And I said, help me, Holy Ghost. And I hit the chord. And I just guessed, I hoped I was in to him who sits on the throne. I just whispered it. I opened my eyes and every bishop in the place was on their face. Every single one. But I had to do it afraid. I took a step and I had to do it afraid. And now we're going to shift because the Holy Spirit wants me to talk to you about stuff in us. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord made me very uncomfortable that something was wrong in my soul. We really have to run after that instead of defending it. I'm going to be transparent. Not easy to do. I don't know some of you. He started saying there's something wrong in your soul. And he made it very uncomfortable inside of me. Very uncomfortable. But because I seek holiness, it doesn't take a whole lot to make me uncomfortable because I don't want anything standing in the way. I don't want a bad attitude. I don't want judgment. I don't want sin in my life. And so I pursue holiness all the time. It's not a religious thing. It's an honor thing. I honor the anointing. Honor the anointing on your life so much that you will only let holiness dwell. And you know, there's sins and there's scapegoats and all kinds of things in me yet I don't know about. But that's okay. Because he goes from one level of glory to another level of glory. So he made it oh, agitating. I was agitated in prayer. I was like, oh, something's wrong. And I started, Shanda Bahola Oh, God, what is it? There's something that's grieving you. And he gently said, it's time for this to come out. Oh, what's the this? What's the this? I'll bring it out. I'll bring it out. But he didn't walk me that way. Again, I want to challenge you. If you're coming up against something that makes you uncomfortable, stop running from it. So I get to work. And I'm angry because the 20-year-olds do absolutely, absolutely nothing. And I'm working my tail off, picking up trash, cleaning poop off the floor. I clean Kroger's. I clean Kroger's. But the Lord bless me with that too because not only did I clean Kroger's, I'm hired by corporate to clean Kroger's in Nashville, which gives me wonderful money. But if you'll work hard and you have the favor of God, God will open doors. And it's a job that everybody else goes, and I just go, what? I've been doing it for 35 years. Cleaning up poop and vomit is nothing to me. But what gets me is when I have to do it all the time and nobody nobody works. So that's something I'm getting totally delivered of. Yes, yes, yes. I want nothing agitating me. I want nothing agitating. I want nothing agitating me. Can I just go ahead and get deliverance in front of you? I want nothing agitating me, God, in Jesus' name. I don't want to respond in any other way than what Jesus did. I don't want to respond in any other way. So, Father, I thank you for healing and delivering. So I was in prayer this night. I was agonizing. He was making it hard on me. There was something that was grieving his spirit. And one day at work, 
my one of my bosses came up and she was angry, angry, angry at me because I had caused a fight. And what I did was I was so angry at the other people not wanting to work, and it seems like they get away with everything, that I took one boss and turned them on the other boss. And I didn't really purposely do that, but the anger caused a reaction. Do you understand what I just said? I didn't purposely try to make them fight, but I was. if, if we don't deal with the stuff in our life, it will come out and it will bite us in the butt. Is that okay to say? It will cause harm in our life if we do not get serious about getting rid of the stuff that he exposes. And she came up and she said, right now, this was a Friday. There's a reason I'm saying that. I'm looking at firing you. And this was a spirit-filled Christian boss. I went, wah, 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 wah. And she said, I'm sick and tired of standing up for you upstairs. And I had no idea what she was talking about. But it made me go into panic attacks. And I haven't had those in years. And by Saturday night, I was getting no relief. And I said to the Lord, I need help. I am going backwards. She traumatized me. I'm traumatized. I'm looking at my retirement going down the drain. (laughs) I'm looking at the embarrassment. And I'm looking at more than anything that I did something in my Christian walk that caused me to get fired. And that's not right. So Sunday comes. I'm in agony at church. I can't get past. I can't get rid of the fear that's hounding me. Uh, When I go to work tomorrow, am I even going to have a job? Help me, God. Send somebody to help me. I need help. And I don't ask for that a whole lot anymore. Uh, When I do, I know who to run to. You got to find someone that really loves you and not under you but runs with you, okay? Otherwise, you'll just get counsel that's not God. So I, 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 I thought I'd go to IHOP. I love IHOP, my favorite restaurant. After church, and I started there, and the Lord said, go to the Chinese restaurant. I like Chinese, but I wanted to go to IHOP, have my <laughs> pancakes and eggs. And the Lord said, go to the Chinese restaurant again. And I was like, okay. I walk in, and it's an old, old friend from years ago sitting there by herself at the Chinese restaurant. She said, are you why I'm here? I I don't know why you're here. She said, I was going to go to IHOP, and the Lord said, come to Chinese restaurant. He told me the same thing. Okay. Why am I here? Why are you here? She said, what's going on, Debbie? And I poured my story out. And I poured my story out. And she said, I just walked through that. Let me pray over you. But she didn't tell me what it was. Hindsight. She didn't tell me what it was. And I said, the Lord's been telling me there's something wrong. I don't know what it is. But I may lose my job over it. This is serious. She finished praying for me. I went home. I got up Monday morning, walked in my job, scared. And the Lord said, just keep working. Just keep working. If you don't hear anything, keep working. So I got my cleaning cart together and my trash bags together, and I started cleaning. Scared. In the middle of the day, when I was getting ready to go home, I said to the Lord, I can't take this anymore. I don't know if they're going to fire me or not. This caused a big rift in the store. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know what to do except to just say, please give me favor. I'm so sorry for what I did. It came out of a woundedness and an offense towards my coworkers. And we've got to get rid of that because it will turn and bite. I went to pick up a few things to head home. And as I'm standing at the register, I said to the Lord, what is this? I'm going to be transparent. Y'all don't know me. He said, it is called, not I am, not me. He did not attach it to me because it's not attached to me. It's not who I am. He said, it's called bullying. Well, and with a split second, I got tissue, it didn't sound. Within a split second, he showed me my whole life. I have been bullied my whole life. The very thing I judged is what I had become. I thought I had forgiven, but there were people I had not forgiven. 
and they were in my workplace. And I could sit there and say I had. I had not. And I knew what to do. I ran outside. I said, I'm coming to the courts. Now, some of you may not have heard this teaching yet, but it is coming out. Thank you, Jesus. I heard the devil say, you are guilty. You're a bully. But because I know the revelation of what happens in the courts, I went, you're right. You're true. I repent. He went, ah. I said, I come in the blood of Jesus. What say you? And he said, go free. And I was totally free. Totally free. Everybody in the work is like, wow, what happened to you? You're like a different person. It's so important to get rid of the offenses. And you know what happened after that? I went home and I said, why did it take you so long to tell me if you'd have just told me? But see, he didn't because it's like a volcano. He knows exactly what it's going to take to get us free. And if we don't have enough momentum to want to be free, we'll band-aid it. But I saw the detriment. I felt the detriment. I didn't want the detriment. And so I'm going to tell you, it's good to be free. But then what I had to do after that was renew my mind. Because the thought patterns, if you'll study, if you'll study on Christian brain the way God made it, he made it to protect itself. And so what happens from our early age is that things will start happening to us that hurt us and wound us. And we'll start building safe, safe places in our soul. We'll start building safe places. And without realizing it, we all of a sudden have a pattern of personality based on our upbringing. And Jesus, in his grace and mercy, he's a good God. He will start working on showing you. And can I just say something to you right here, and then I'm going to leave it right here. That there came a time that my father, the Lord showed me how to get well from my father, who left so many scars on my life, it was not even funny. But the father, he showed me one day as I'm walking through my house, I did everything I knew to do, my part. I went to healing rooms, I got books and CDs, I went to get help, I did everything I knew to do to get well took a couple of years. Doris was part of that. And I'm going to just give you a little side bit here. There's a book called, yep, it just left my head, Blessing Your Spirit by Arthur Burke that the healing rooms give out. And she headed up the Nashville healing rooms, and it's talking about speaking to your soul. And each of the days that you do this, it takes the word puts it in conversation form and you insert your name and you speak to your soul the first part of each day. Debbie, and I lay hands on the sick because the sick shall be healed. Debbie, awaken to the word of the Lord. Hear what the Lord has to say. And you read aloud. It's scripture. And there's inserts for your name. So if you need some healing, that's a great, it took me to, wow. Wow. So there was this day, as I'm walking through my house, the Lord had told me some things to do to get well from my father who was still living. And I did what he told me to do, simple things to do to get well, to finish up the healing. And as I'm walking through my house, not thinking of my dad, he, the Lord, came and cauterized and finished. I walked over this red line, and I didn't realize it till I walked, whoa, whoa. What was that red line? I moved into a new place in God. And he finished the healing. Now, (laughs) I asked him. Because when he finished it, my heart was soft, pliable, loving. Because the wound for my dad was huge. And the Lord took me into eternity in that moment when I said, why? Can I ask you why? 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 Why did you have me born in that family where I risked my life every day not knowing if I would survive and the scars mentally from watching my mother be tortured and my father laughed while he tortured her and made me watch. It took years to get that out of my brain. It took years. 
But I was determined. It would not have me. I was determined when he said in my car when I tried to commit suicide. He said, I have a good life for you. But you have to start doing it my way. And I thought I was. I was in ministry. I was married at that time. I was happy. I thought, but you see, every decision I made was based on survival of how I knew survival. And every once in a while, I let God come in. You understand what I'm saying? I made music, my God. Did not realize that. And he took me through a tremendous stripping on that one, my identity. And when he took me there, he showed me a line of people about I don't even know how about because you couldn't see the end. It was in eternity. It was about 20 people wide, and it snaked back all the way to beginning to Adam. And they were broken, broken, broken people. And I saw four people walk out of the line while Jesus and I stood there viewing the line. And I said, who are they? He said, they are like you. It takes courage to get well because you have to tell your soul you're no longer in charge. You're no longer in charge. You're not going to keep me captive anymore. My spirit man who is perfect is going to come in alongside of you and be your best friend. Our soul was never meant to be somebody we just constantly are contained with. They're meant to walk together. They're meant to walk together, the soul and the spirit. And he said, the reason I put you in that family was because I trusted you. And that word trust took me to my knees. Because at that point when he said that, I felt honored. I don't know how to put that in English words. I felt honored at my childhood. And because he finished healing my heart from my mother and my father before that, I loved my mom and dad in a whole new way because they were the ones who helped, not hindered. Because when they both were on their deathbeds, they wanted what I had. What if I hadn't been a part of that family? Do you see? So we sit and we look at life and we say, I don't like this, I don't like that. But what you don't see is the whole picture. You don't see the whole picture. You're thinking, like my daughter, why would God make me suffer like this? Oh, my goodness. You've made choices. You made choices. And the way to get better choices is to get healed. Because your choices will no longer hinge on what God can do for you. Your choices will be, what can I do for God? And it will not be a serve, 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 serve thing. It will be, I'm honored. Just like when I walked out that door Thursday, carrying that, tra- or not carrying, pushing that trash can, going, I'm here to honor my I call my pastor. I'm here to honor my boss, and I'm here to do what you said, God. I don't understand. I don't want that in me either. I want you to keep taking that out of me. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to pass the test. God, this is not, I'm so sorry that's still there. I want that out of me that I think it's not right. I want that out of me that I think those little millennial kids need to learn how to work. I want that out of me. I want that out of me. I want that out of me. I want that when I see them leave trash on the floor that I just cleaned up, that I won't sit there and my first response is, I want my first response to be, hey, what's up, bud? And really mean it. But do you know that comes with the mind being renewed? And so I'm having to renew my mind. And so I say to you, what Michael and his dad are talking about, what pastor's talking about, moving high up in the spirit, it's getting a doggone fight inside and saying, I refuse to be wounded. I refuse to be to be anything less than holy. I refuse. I, I, I'm telling you, there has to come a fire. So I always cry out to God, I need your fire. Because if I have your fire, I'll have your passion. And if I have your passion, I'll stop resisting. I forget you're over here. I'm sorry. I want the fire. Not for what I can do, but because the fire will burn the flesh. So can I say to you, this weekend, things are real different. I was sitting back here thinking of Randy. Randy belonged to a 
really outstanding, awesome church with all the best worship teams for a long time. I'm sitting there going, Randy's first time. Yep, he sees me just, you know, <laughs> up here. Just, oh, yay. But, you know, I know Randy sees in the spirit, and I know what he sees. But can I say to you, he knows what he's doing here this weekend. And I'm saying to you, would you press and would you push to stop staying in the same place, riding the same bicycle, getting you nowhere? And if someone says to you, a leader or whatever, to please do something, raise your hand, sit down, whatever. I know for me, if I ask that, it's because I see in the spirit, like for instance, and we're going to close. When, I, when we went into that song, it's so funny, we laughed because right before we came, we watched the video of uh, Upper Room. Do you ever see Upper Room's worship in Dallas? Awesome. If you don't know Upper Room, go to YouTube, plug in Upper Room Worship. They are, they are 24-7 prayer and worship. Their worship is awesome. So what are they doing? I, I had to watch, let her watch it. All of the glory, all of the honor is yours, it's yours. And what I saw was, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to cast crowns. What we have done here on the earth, what we're doing in the earth, I throw it on you, God. Everything I am, I give to you, God. And that's what I was put, trying to put across without talking too much and breaking the flow. I was saying, watch, watch. And I got a few watching. But what I was seeing in the spirit was, and the Lord said this because I didn't know this before today. I'm sorry, I'm spitting on y'all. I have said before today, you don't need to wait till heaven to throw your crowns. What you're doing here on this earth wins your crowns. I don't know if that's the right word, wins you. But you obtain crowns here on this earth by what you do to serve and honor God and do it in the right heart. And the Lord said, you can throw your crowns sorry, at me now. All of the glory. All of the... And what I was doing was showing you a way to break through. So you know, I'm in as much learning curve as you all are here this weekend. So. So. I just got a word for you, if you don't mind. Wow. The Lord said you've been standing and there's been like shifting sand is what I hear. There's been things going on around that just don't want to stabilize in the spirit. They want to fight you. And so they keep trying to make your feet slip. And they're an assignment to get you to slip and fall. You will not. So I hear the Lord saying, I myself am putting an end to that slippery slimy, sandy. Every time you're taking a step, that thing and everything behind it says, we'll make them slip this time. You will not. God says your honor of him is causing you to walk on high places that they will never touch. That they will never touch. They have no idea who they're dealing with. They think they do. But see, they look at you as another human. (laughs) They do not know who you are. And I say that with all honor. They do not know who they're dealing with. But I say in the name of Jesus that this stops right now. And the blood of Jesus cover you. And every preconceived assignment against you is broken in the name of Jesus. I see you wrapped in a beautiful blue, which is glory, ribbon. And the Lord said, I've given you to be a gift to this earth, and you shall continue, and I will unwrap you where I need you. And some will receive, and some won't. But he says, but the seed is being sown, and the seed is going to grow, and you're going to see a rich harvest by the time you leave this place, this earth. But the Lord says, I myself have wrapped you. I myself have prepared you, and I myself have given you to this earth. I have given you as a gift. And the Lord says the seeing, I see you like, even with you looking at me, you're like James Gall. When he gives me a word, fire shoots out of his eyes. (laughs) And I'm kind of like, gee. But you know what it is? It's the fire of God. But the Lord says your sight pierces, pierces the atmosphere. And you don't just see things. The Lord said there's power in your sight. And they hate that you can see them. But Lord, let them see them all the more. (laughs) That which was to be your downfall, may it fall back on them a hundred times fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor.
scripture. When Ellen and I were in the room today, just mulling over some stuff, out of my spirit came that you need to declare, you need to declare, you meaning all of us, that you need to declare the goodness of God follows me. And with that, I'm just going to share this one thing. I was walking out of Kroger one day, and you ever have somebody when you're younger, they come up and want to wrestle you? It's usually a man thing. You know, come up from the back and jump on you. I felt this thing jump on me, wrap around me, and I look, and it was an angel. And he said, the favor of God follows you everywhere you go. But I claim that every day. Do you know your angels are going to do what you ask? So every day when I walk in Kroger, as that door opens, I just right now speak that I walk in the favor of God. I walk in the favor of God. And that is a weapon in your hand that you can release and destroy the works of the enemy. Amen? It's okay. Thank you, Father. We receive every word that came from your throne. Father, let it be planted deep in us, water it, shine upon it, that it would bring forth a harvest in our life. I thank you, Lord, that you will complete that which you have begun in each of us. I thank you, Father, that we are complete in you. Thank you for the fullness of our redemption. Thank you for completion in the spirit in Jesus name amen so we're going to start at 7 so go wherever and get some rest and get something to eat and we're just going to take off from where we left off (laughs) and uh, it's all good amen